I'm Pano Femus. I play for the Niagara Ice Dogs, NHL draft year 22. I'm coming on. I only touch greatness podcast. I'm Aiden Castle. I play for the Niagara Ice Dogs. My draft year is 2022, and I'm coming on. I only touch greatness podcast. I'm Joey Costanzo with the Niagara Ice Dogs. My NHL draft year is 2023, and I'm coming on the I Only Touch Greatness podcast. Looking for the most beers on tap? Great stakes, great staff. Head over to the John B. Pub. We got the best beers, steaks, chicken wings, nachos in town. Come see us at the John B. Pub. The John B. Pub, the best bar in town. Come sign up for our football pool. Say hey, St. Ying. The number one sports podcast in Vancouver with Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. Ryan Hayes and Big Mike are taking over the podcast scene in Vancouver. Get down or lay down. Lay down. Pano, uh, born in Richmond Hill, Ontario. Uh, tell us a little about your hockey story, uh, where you started and where you came to now. Yeah, um, I basically started in Thornhill. Um, I started my first year hockey a year up, and then I played in Vaughn um, for a bit, and then Willowdale, and then I started um, with JRC in my minor Adam year, and then spent seven years with the organization, and now I'm with the ice dogs, so. Okay, and uh, Aiden, uh, same question for you, bud. Uh, born in Mississauga, if my stats are correct. Uh, tell us a little about your hockey story. 
Uh, well, I grew up uh, in North Toronto for most of my younger career. Uh, I played uh, for Don Mills for my first three years of the GTHL. And then I switched over to the Junior Canadians um, for the last four, and then uh, including my minor major year. And then I got drafted uh, to Oshawa and then I ended up in Niagara. Okay. And uh, Joey, uh, same question for you, bud. Uh, born in Toronto, I believe. Uh, tell us your hockey story. Yeah. So grew up in Toronto. Uh more specifically Etobicoke. Um, I always played like my minor hockey. Um, started off as a player playing for like what in like Western Ontario, Western Toronto. Then I moved like um, like Etobicoke. Played played minor hockey there for a bit longer, and then I moved up. Played for the Nats 04 for a year. Then I made like to my own age group. Played for the Titans for a few years. Then I went to Markham, and then I played my last three years of minor hockey for the Toronto Marlboros, and now I'm here with the Ice Dogs. You guys play any other sports growing up, or was it always hockey? No, I played lacrosse. Um, I played soccer for like a couple of years when I was like really young, like six or seven, but um, I took over lacrosse, and I love the sport. Um, I miss it quite a bit. Actually, I had to quit a couple of years ago, but I still try and keep a stick in my hand once in a while, and play some catch with my brother or a couple of buddies um, and get to play a game or two whenever I can. Um, but that's what I played in the summer. Okay. Yeah. For me, it was uh, soccer and hockey. Those were the t- my two main sports and played uh, select like soccer at the highest level, uh, like growing up and started since I was like six and I had to quit when I was about uh, probably 13, 13, 14. And just to kind of, you know, focus on hockey. But, yeah, it was, it was a great time playing soccer. I liked it a lot. Yeah, and then for me, I was always a multi-sport athlete growing up. Like, um, I played a lot of different things, mostly just hockey. Obviously, it was always my number one. But I also played, like, football, baseball. Growing up, I played basketball at school for a really long time. So I played, I played baseball and football up until almost last year, until – you know, cocky uh, was always my number one. So that's always been my main focus. All right. Okay, and uh, do you guys have any uh, nicknames? What's your favorite jersey number and why? <laughs> For nicknames, um, I mean, I guess the guys call me Femmer once in a while. Um, I don't know, Cass, what do they call me? Pan Man sometimes. Depends on the person. Um, but, I mean, Pan is already a short inversion of my name. So, um that's the what's the second part of the question, sir? Uh favorite jersey number and why? Oh, yeah, um 17's mine. Um I'm born on June 17th. And I mean I saw a couple of Wendell Clark videos when I was younger and I, I got to meet him a couple of times and um just kind of stuck with it for a while. And then now we're 19, just because I, I looked up to Jonathan Taze for a long time and I still do. Um but yeah. Pretty sure that date there you had there, June. I'm just quickly Googling it. Oh, June 16th, Tupac's birthday. So I thought it was the same day. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Um, for me, my nickname's always been like just Cass. It's just a shortened version of Castle. Uh, that's pretty much the only one I've ever had. Just never had another one. That's what all the guys call me. Um, and then favorite number uh, is 19. But Pano took it. So oh, yeah. I just switched to 90. You took it. Okay. Just, just switched to 90. I mean, it was either 19 or a Rolex. So. Oh, there you go. There you, you go. Shoot. All right. I like this. The chirps are happening already. This yeah. Is good. Yeah. yeah. So I just switched to 90 this year. Uh, I like it. It looks good on the jersey. And uh, yeah, switch. That's, that's a cool number, actually. I like that. 9-0 yeah. on the back. Yeah, thanks. And Joey? Yeah, so for me, like, so I'm the same as Cass and Panel. Like, it's, it's simple. Like, my name's always just been really Joey. Like, I have it on my mask. Just a shortened version. Like, already, like Pano said, it's already shortened version of Joseph. So, it's a shortened version of my real name. And then just my jersey number. When I grew up, it was always 42. And then I think Pee Wee, uh, one of the other kids on the team, was, like, really desperate to have 42. So, I switched to 33. Just a lot of goalies in history have had the number 33 and had a lot of success. Guys like Patrick Waugh, guys like that. And then, yeah, it's been my jersey number for the last four, five, six years. And uh, this one's for all of you. Uh, what's one challenge you've come across and get into today? 
Uh, uh, I guess I'll go first. Um, I mean, I've been faced with quite a few, and I mean, in a good way. I, I kind of think that's a pretty good thing, to be honest. Um, you know, there's never really an easy route to uh, getting better, and when you face adversity, um, that's truly when you when you find deep down like how good you are and you challenge yourself to get better um so i think the biggest ones for me are are definitely injuries um it's when you face adversity the most in my opinion you gotta miss time you gotta learn how to be patient sit back and and look at the game from a different view um but yeah i mean any any sort of adversity that i've faced along the way are all obstacles that i've had to overcome that have gotten me to where i am yeah and pressure makes diamonds so yeah if you have to face that exactly. adversity, then it makes it a yeah, better outcome, right? Yeah, for sure. And the more you avoid it, I feel like um, the more you send yourself back and the more you kind of shy away from it and hide from it, you're only hurting yourself. So, yep. Mm-hmm. You order. Yeah, for me, uh, similar to panel, just injuries. And um, the one I always use and for when people ask me, you know, challenges uh, was when I was 14. I, uh, I had an avulsion fracture in my right hip and that, that was really hard. Um, I, it happened right before, right after the end of the season. So I had all summer to rehab and, you know, just try to get it um, as oh. back to normal as possible. And uh, yeah, it really for me, it happened at a young age. So it really kind of helped me mature and kind of just, um, just realize and not take anything for granted and just uh, help my work ethic too, to get back from that injury. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely similar for me. Like, like Pano said, like adversity is only ever going to make you better. You know, you have to go through it to, you know, I guess, achieve more. And then for me, like, um, uh, things like switching teams often or once every few years, definitely hard, you know, becoming, be developing relationships with new people on different teams, you know, lack of playing time, you know, earning respect with new people, things like that, moving your way up the ranks. Like that, that can definitely be seen as adversity, and a part of that's what makes me a better goalie. Okay. Absolutely, that's the and, last. Uh, that's the last serious question I'll be giving you. <laughs> and uh, who do you guys uh, mirror your game after? Uh, try and play like. Yeah, um, I mean, I see a bit of Braden Point in myself. Um, I kind of model my game after him. A little bit of grittiness to his style. He's not the biggest guy, but. He's one of the hardest working on the ice all the time. Um, he's always moving his feet, making those nice passes and seeing the ice from from a way that a lot of players can't. Um, right? Using his speed and his hockey IQ to his advantage. And those are both two things that I try to do um, all the time and in all areas of the ice. So that's someone I definitely look up to and try to model my game after. Uh, for me... Uh, well, I really like Nathan McKinnon, but a little bit more realistically, uh, I really like Matthew Barzal yeah. and uh, his playmaking abilities. And he's a bit smaller than me, but uh, his playmaking abilities, ability to skate is really um, like what I try to model my game after. And then I also really like Adrian Campe on LA. I uh, recently just started watching him a lot. Uh, I think me and him have very similar styles of play. So just watching him when I get the chance, obviously LA is in a different time zone, but Watching highlights of him is I try to like pick up some stuff from him. Me and Ryan uh, love Barzell because oh, yeah. uh, he's basically from like ten minutes from where we are right now. So uh, we love that guy out here. And uh, it's funny you say Kempe. I was at the game last night, uh, Vancouver and LA, and uh, I just remember thinking like, who's that? And I looked back at my like I look at my phone, who is that? And it, the guy was just flying like yeah, he is he's fast. Very, very he's good. fast. It definitely stood out. Yeah. Good choice there. Yeah, and then for me, like the guys I've modeled my game over through the years has definitely been Mark andre Fleur and Andre Vasilevsky. You know, they're really fun guys to watch. Like, they're always really dialed in. You look at Fleur, he's always smiling. You look at you look at Vasilevsky, he almost looks like he's crazy how big his eyes get sometimes in the net. They're both extremely competitive. They're really fast. They're big goalies. You know, they use their size and athleticism to their advantage. It's really fun watching them, and I really like their style of play. So that's what I try to model it after. <laughs> and uh, oh, go ahead, Ray. Yeah, I was a little slow on the draw there. No worries. Uh, <laughs> the, if you're having a dream dinner party, 
and you can invite three famous people that are alive. Who do you want to bring? Hey, Joe, why don't you start this one? Uh, <laughs> Cass, uh, do you want to start this one? Yeah, I'll start right, it. If you want, I'll go first and tell you mine. <laughs> go for it. Okay. So I always go with Tupac, Seth Rogen, and then uh, depends. What, some, a little bit of eye candy. I like Blake Lively or Pauline Negretzky. Okay, good one. I'll go um, Wayne Gretzky, Ryan Reynolds, and Adam Sandler. Nice, nice. Uh, that'd be a fun dinner table. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it would. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, uh, for me, it's always been Kobe Bryant, but you said alive. So, for me, no, no, I think I'd go – Dead or alive? The uh, okay. Well, for me, I, I got. I'll stick to it. I'll go alive. For me, I, I'd I'd want to have dinner with Kevin Hart, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, <laughs> and Keanu Reeves. I feel like like Dwayne the Rock Johnson, like um, and uh, what was the first Kevin, one I said? Kevin Hart. They both Kevin Hart. Them. I feel they already get along really well, and it's like always cool to see them too. And I just feel like like Keanu Reeves would just be a cool change of pace to them. So I, I feel like the contrast between them three would be really cool to see. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. And I, uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I definitely have to go with Kevin Hart. Um, I'm a huge fan, so um, he'd be one, and then Tiger Woods. Um, and then as a third, um, I think I got to go with Gretzky. I mean, I like to stay away from the game as much as possible, but. You know, you can always learn a thing or two from the from the good. So, yeah, exactly. Good choices. And uh, Pano, uh, take us back to uh, draft day when you were drafted second overall in 2020 to Niagara. Yeah, um, it was obviously a great day. Um, it, it was a pretty big moment for myself and my family. Um, big step in my career. And I mean... The rest is history from then on. It. But um, yeah, it was, it was overall a great day. Um, everyone was excited and we all enjoyed the moment. But I mean, we're back to playing hockey now and we're out of those COVID times. So it's all exactly. Good. Yeah. And uh, Aiden, same for you. Uh, congratulations. Always the 13th overall in 2020 to uh, Oshawa Generals. Uh, take us back to draft day for you. Uh, Similar to Pan, it was, it was um, awesome to be drafted especially in the first round. Um, and uh, it was a great day. I spent with my family. And, um, yeah, it was just exciting. And uh, Joey, 23rd overall in 2021 to Niagara. Uh, bring us back to draft day for you. Yeah, definitely. Like, similar to them, obviously a very exciting day. Like, one of the biggest moments in, like, my life so far. And it's definitely my hockey career. Like, uh didn't know where I was going to go, so I'm very uh, still still nervous, but, you know, I'm happy where I'm landed. I'm happy to play with Cast and Pano now. And, um, you know, ever since, it's been nothing but good. I've enjoyed my time in Niagara so far. Okay. And do you guys have any hidden talents? Hidden talents? I don't know. I mean, I used to be able to do a Rubik's Cube. Oh, well, there you go. I don't know if I can still do it. <laughs> okay, that's still one. It's been a while. Juggle, but I mean, I feel like too many people can do that. So, uh, okay. Joey, are you a juggler? Uh, I'm not a juggler. Oh, I've tried cool. many yeah, times, man. but I, I can't say I'm very you're too cold. successful. <laughs> Panel, you're gonna have to teach him how to juggle, man. Yeah, honestly, like you're a goalie, man. How, how can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> As long as you can stop the puck, that's all I care about. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you guys have any uh, pregame rituals or routines? Um, I don't know. I, I try to stay away from rituals. Um, I like to stick to routines. Um, if something works, I might keep it. I mean, it might not last very long, but I'll keep it and see how it goes. But no, I just have stretches that are part of my routine, tape my stick, uh, listen to music, just small things like that. But I mean, I don't die by the, like live and die by them. Um, right. I try to wait for, stay away from superstitions just because they can get in your head too and uh, can 
hurt you sometimes, but no, those are just some small routines that I have. Okay. Yeah, for me, it's similar to panels. Just try to stay away from superstitions because uh, it make you a bit crazy. But um, <laughs> for me, uh, it's, yeah, just like every game, uh, what I do before um, I play well, if I play well one game, then I try to stick to the same routine, like have the same food or, you know, tape my stick the same way or something like that, you know, just kind of whenever I play well, I try to do the same thing next game. And then, uh, yeah. But other than that, just uh, tape my stick every game, listen to music, some of the piano. Okay. Yeah. For me, it's definitely similar. You know, many goalies are very superstitious. I, I, I don't, I'm the same as Cass and Fimmer again. I don't, I don't like superstitions. Um, I feel like for me, uh, they just tend to get in the way. But um, I'll definitely do, like like uh, like Cass said, if something's working, you know, I'll, I'll keep doing it. But for me, just simple stuff like stretching, throwing the ball around, like doing my stick, like all that fun stuff. But for me, like I'm not a very superstitious player. Okay. And uh, Pano, uh, obviously congratulations on representing our country at the Youth Olympic Games. Uh, take us back to that. What was that like? Yeah, it was great. It was a surreal moment for sure. Um I mean, you dream of it as a kid and represent your country. I mean, I don't know if there's anything better you can do. Um, so obviously it was a great moment and to come back with some hardware was even better. Um, but yeah, overall, it was, a, it was a great experience and a great opportunity to represent our country. So. And uh, Joey, uh, just recently coming back with the U17 uh, Canada Black Champions. Uh, bring us back to that, man. Uh, yeah, it was definitely a really big experience, a really big accomplishment. You grow up watching the World Juniors, Olympics, all that fun stuff on TV with Team Canada. So it was a really cool moment putting on Team Canada jersey for the first time. Um, and then to win it again with guys I've met within the same week was something really special. Like, we had a great team, and I'm, I'm glad we came back and won. Okay, I got one for all you guys. Uh, if you were an animal, what would you be? A dog. I spoil my dog. I was like, <laughs> so do I. Did mine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely a dog. Either a dog or um, or a lion. Okay. okay. Lions rule the jungle, so why not? Be the king. Um. Damn. Uh, for me, I would probably. I'd probably just go with a lion or a cheetah. I like both of those and King of the Jungle Lion and it would be pretty sick to be a cheetah. Yeah. Yeah. Bad. I always go with a dolphin because I look like a dolphin because he's got no hair and a nose. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my this is my dog Tupac. For real. <laughs> for me, it's a one hundred percent a dog. Like who wouldn't be want to be a dog for a day? I'm a huge dog person. Like I have a dog at home, I have a dog in my billet house. Like they just, they just have such a cool chill vibe, like I, I just love everything about dogs. So for me, it's 100% a dog, like no debate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I also like to know and, what I'm saying once in a while, like, you know, when they're barking at you, they're giving yeah. the puppy dog eyes. Like, <laughs> you know, I wish, they could, I wish they could just talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, English, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, but like, again, they have their own language with you too. Like just the way, like just their emotions and the way they look at you, it's almost like they talk to you. So no it's, yeah. it's still cool. Yeah. And uh, Pano, I'll uh, bring you back to your first uh, OHL goal. And do you sell the puck? Yeah, I do have the puck. It's, uh, it's not my bill house. I brought it home when I went back. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was a great opportunity. I just saw an opening and just fired the puck. But, yeah, it's always, it's always a pretty cool moment to get that first one. And Aiden, uh, same question for you, bud. Uh, first OHL goal for you. And do you sell the puck? Uh, yeah, so, uh, same Pano. I brought it back to my house, put it up in my room. Um, yeah, um, I remember it was in Barry, um, and uh, I was on the power play. It was there was like three seconds left from the power play. Landon Cato made a cross seam past me on the power play. I had a lot of time it went from right to left. I had lots of time, and then I just short side above the shoulder. Nice, nice. And uh, Joey, uh, take me back to your first uh, OHL game and what the emotions were going through. Yeah, like definitely a little nervous, a little excited. You know, I'm a big competitor, so I wanted to win that game. Uh, I thought I played very well. You know, like my first shot on net, 
was uh, a shot. It was a screenshot from the top. I guess the top of the circles and it was a one timer. It went off the back boards off my back and almost went in. So in that, that was, that was almost like my welcome to the OHL moment. And then <laughs> like, just like that, like that could have been disastrous. My first OHL play goal going off my back and in. So <laughs> like, yeah, I, I played well that game. We didn't get the win, but you know, it's, it's still like one of the, one of the better games I've played this year so far. So I, it's, it's, although we didn't win, I'm, I'm still proud of that moment in a way. And uh, for all you guys as well, uh, what's you guys, uh, <laughs> Favorite road barn? I know you don't haven't played in too many ranks. If it's not your favorite road barn, what's uh, what's a dream venue for you? Uh, it's a tough one. Yeah, um, we play in Barry a lot. And, like they get pretty good numbers, and it's close to home. Um, okay. Oshawa is pretty cool too. I mean, it's a tight squeeze in there, and the fans are right on top of you. And even though I hate them because they're all over us, but. <laughs> <laughs> Gets pretty rowdy in there and places buzzing, but I mean, probably Oshawa. For me, we have we haven't played in Kitchener. We don't play them all year, but in the preseason we played in Kitchener. I really like that arena, just the lighting and like the atmosphere. We didn't there was preseason, so there was a minimum of fans, but it was good. It was really good. Uh for the toughest, I would say. I know it's a question, but I just this popped out of my head is Sudbury. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Fans are all over you. <laughs> they got a lot of fans, and it's just so tough to play. It's a little dark. You got to walk. You got to walk through the stands to get to the bench. It's yeah, like, the fans oh, really. Really? Oh, really? Yeah, it's so old school. Like, that's the oldest rink in the in the league. And they okay. got the wolf that comes over. Yeah, the wolf yeah, comes over when you get scored against. Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's brutal. I don't that's know. If awesome. I don't know if I, we've ever even had anybody from Sudbury on our show. No, I don't know. Ah, maybe I'm not sure. I got that must and Joey. Kid. They got yeah, then for, for me, like, obviously, I like the rinks close to home. The Oshawa rink's a really cool rink. Um, Mississauga, obviously, it's 10 minutes from my house. Right. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm again with Cass. For whatever reason, I, I, I was scratched for our only game in Sudbury this year so far. But I almost really like Sudbury's rink because it's got, like, a really old-school feel. It's a smaller rink, but it was packed. A lot of fans, they get crazy. Like they said, your dressing room is in the hallway where people walk between <laughs> periods to the snack bar, and there's nothing but a. Cur- it's not even a door; it's a curtain. So like it's it's it, it's 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 crazy, but um, I, I really like the arena. Like the atmosphere was sick. I don't know. I uh, like, I I haven't played in a game there against Sudbury yet, but maybe maybe I will, I'll enjoy it a little less when I'm playing. But um, that was that was just a that was a really cool atmosphere. Do you guys have a favorite sports movie? Ooh. Um, there's so many. Probably have to go with Miracle. Okay. Um, but I also really like Rudy too. Rudy's a yeah. real good one. <laughs> but yeah, always got to go with the true stories. Like, I mean, they just hit different. But oh yeah, they did. Yeah. actually, uh, Rudy's always my pick too. But uh, we had the real Rudy on the podcast no way yeah the guy yeah that, the guy oh. that movie was made about wow that's pretty cool yeah that was pretty cool actually gotta throw coach carter in there too Real yeah. good. <clears throat> for me it's a miracle as well and then uh happy gilmore i don't know if it's really a sports movie, that but i love watching that counts yeah, yeah. It definitely counts yeah and then for me uh my two is probably uh, remember the uh, remember the Titans and then uh, remember the Titans and facing the Giants. They're both football movies. Yep. Uh, they both kind of just teach you about life in general. There, it's almost like it's almost like a life story first before like sport, but like the stories in them, they're really well written, and uh, I I really like both just the storylines and then I just feel like. The action school as well. Like I was a football guy growing up. My dad's a football guy. I really liked. I, I just really liked those two movies. Okay. Yeah, those are good choice. I love Remember the Titans. It's probably my favorite movie by far. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you guys could choose one song to play every time you walked into a room, what would it be? That's a tough one. Um, I'm terrible with titles, so I don't know. 
Like Eye of the Tiger is a real good one. Okay, yeah. Um, I like that. Yeah, I probably have to go with Eye of the Tiger. Okay. Uh, for me, probably Ghosts. Probably something by ACDC, like Thunderstruck, Howl's Bells, maybe. Something by ACDC, definitely. Sweet. For me, it's probably Till I Collapse by Eminem. And why I say that is because on my Marley's team, that would be our walkout song before we went on the ice because our coach is just a huge, or my old coach, sorry, my prior coach, yeah. just a huge Eminem fan. Okay. So okay. we play that before every game. And I just remember like sitting at the, sitting at the, like waiting for the Zamboni to get off. And just everyone in the arena would think we're crazy because we brought this huge speaker to the bench with us playing to like collapse for each game. So, you know, like I, that, that almost, that, that, uh, that song almost gives me a little nostalgia and I feel like it always gets me going before games. So. Okay. Okay. I love it. It's a great song. It is a great song. And uh, Pano and Aiden, uh, you guys are super skilled. Uh, have either of you guys tried the Michigan or lacrosse goal in a game yet? No, no I'm not. I'm not. Um, practice for fun. I'll do it here and there, but I don't know if there'll ever be an opportunity in the game to actually do it. You need a lot of time and space. I don't know. Maybe one day, though. If I get the opportunity, I'll try, but I don't know. I don't really practice it too much. I probably yeah. should practice it a couple times before I try it, but yeah, I don't okay. know. I, I was, I was going yeah, to say, say about Cass. Like, he's tried it a couple times on me in practice. I, he hasn't pulled it off yet, but he's getting close. So I, I got to remember to pull my shoulder up a little each time Each time he's coming around the net, so I, I got to be a little careful sometimes. Yeah, as a goalie, uh, okay. how do you prepare for that? Oh, you just, you just got to, um, you kind of see them coming around the net and you'll see them lift their stick, try to, you know, get the puck on their forehand. So what you just got to do as a goalie is just try your best, just to get your shoulder up, block the top of the post. Um, Callum Ritchie's done it in game a few times and I was with him at camp and he's tried it with me at camp. So I had a little practice stopping it in camp because he, he tried it a couple times in camp. He almost pulled it off once or twice. So it was good practice of how to stop it. It's a really cool move though. Yeah, it is. Okay, and uh, what color are you guys' stick tape, and uh, what's your favorite Gatorade color? White tape and definitely yellow Gatorade. Same thing, yeah, yellow Gatorade and white tape. For me, um, I've used both throughout the years, but, you know, I, I use white tape primarily now. And then for me, it's blue Gatorade, cool blue Gatorade. Ever since doing this podcast, I kind of learned uh, that goalies don't usually wear or use black tape. Like, it's not, uh, it's not very common. Yeah, for whatever reason, like I, I've just I've I, I preferred black tape for a really long time. Now I've just switched to white. For me, I, I guess it's also more accessible in the dressing room, things like that. But true, um, true. I don't know. I, I just feel I, I just feel like it's it's a little it has a little bit of a lighter feel, easier for playing the puck. A lot of guys they use black tape because it tends to be a little more resistant. You tend to catch pucks a little better, like on your tape. So maybe that's okay. why. But for me, I've been a white tape guy for the last few years. So if there was like rookie idol or something and you had to sing one karaoke song, what song are you picking? Did you guys do that by the way? We know a lot of the other uh CHL teams do it. Yeah, we did. For mine I had to sing shallow, so I don't know. Okay. So, uh, I, I enjoyed it. Honestly, it's a good tune. Like good It is a good tune. Too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How was he, boys? He was good. Oh, it was in the bottom. Right. He started off with first, a, a few voice cracks here and there, but he got first. better. So okay, uh, okay. Yeah, I, I went first. It's not easy to do. That's for that's sure. not easy. Yeah, you had so, to break the ice. That's hard. I don't know. Like I feel like I get extra credits for that, but you do. You do. Can't hear myself. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I did pretty good. <laughs> mine was uh, work by Rihanna. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it was all right. I, th I think I did pretty good. Yeah, I I'd say you did pretty good. You're not the loudest guy, but you you're pretty loud. So I don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for me, I got lucky. So I'm a goalie. So I was at the very end, and like we were approaching the end of the bus ride. So I got lucky. I didn't have to do it, but I don't I don't know which one I'd do. There are not many songs I know like word for word, like all the way through. So I kind of lucked out with that. I don't know what they'd make me sing. Usually all the songs they picked were a little slower to make it a little more like cringier for us. But, um, <laughs> oh, they get to pick the song? I, I, yeah. yeah. So I, I, don't, I don't know. What, That's uh, even worse. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's tough. You got real lucky that you uh, stalled until the end of the bus ride. Yeah. <laughs> if you ever get to pick, if you ever get to pick the song, if you're the easiest one to do, heads up, it's tequila. So, because there's only one word in the song, you like, you like dance around a whole bunch and then you yell out tequila. <laughs> no, but you don't get to pick clearly in this yeah, one. I didn't think, I didn't, yeah, that's new. Uh, if a scouter GM were to ask, uh, what do you guys bring to the table or describe your game? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a two way forward um, who likes to use his speed and hockey IQ to his, to his advantage. Um, I'll be moving my feet in all areas of the ice and to always. Be one of the hardest working guys on the ice. I'm a huge competitor and a huge leader. Um, and I love to win. So good attributes to have, bud. Yeah. Um for me, uh, I would probably just say I describe myself as a fast playmaker. Um, and I think uh that I my shots developed a lot um over the course of the COVID year and the summer and this year a lot. Um I'm hard working, like to win, like Pano said. And um, I'm a good teammate. All good attributes. Yeah, and then for me, I'm definitely uh, a fast, big, athletic goalie. You know, I like I like to use my athleticism and make saves. I'm a really big competitor. Um, my skating, my game, and technical side has come a long way. I, f- I feel I've come a lot. I've become a lot better goalie that way. And uh, like Pano Cass said, same thing. I love to win. I'm a huge competitor. Hey, fellas, I just want to uh, thank you all for uh, taking the time for us and coming on and chatting with us. Uh, you obviously know we're big fans of you guys, and you guys are going to be going far in hockey, and you have fans in us for life, so we appreciate you taking the time. We hope to have you on the show again one day down the road. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having us 